it's crazy because something is happening. Something's happening as a collective. Something changed. I've realized it. God makes filler people, right? Like, look, let me tell you something. I learned a valuable thing about God. Whoever the God is in the sky, whatever you want to call him, I learned a valuable thing about God. God is, a, he has a twisted agenda. I want you to think about this. God has a twisted agenda. And his agenda is, I don't think God is a good person or a bad person. I think it's just, he just does things and he likes to see the outcome, like a scientist. Right? I believe God himself is a scientist. I don't think he's good or bad. I think he's a scientist. He does things to see what's going to happen. Right? I don't think he's like, oh, I, I didn't know. He's a scientist. He's a mad scientist. Right? God is God, whatever you want to call him. I believe that it. Right? First and most foremost, first, no, first, right? first. God is not man or woman, so we must stop calling it father or he or him. Right? Let's stop that. Let's, like, we have to stop that from the jump. We must stop calling it him or heavenly father or the father or him or he. Right? We must stop calling God father. Off the gate. Off the gate. That's the first step. But whatever it is, whatever it is, it works in a mad scientist way. The creator works in a mad scientist way. And what I mean by that is it does things to see how things are going to turn out. So I realized, right? I realized this, right? I go, maybe God, wait, listen to me, right? Maybe God set up my entire neighborhood, right? Maybe he did this. Maybe he set up all the neighborhood. Maybe God set up my neighborhood the way it was set up. And it was meant for like certain individuals to shed the light on the neighborhood. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he sets everybody at a lower level and then he puts one person at a specific level and he likes to see if that person can like fix everybody. And I used to think of that to a molecular level and then I started thinking to a super micro molecular level and I said, he's always done that, right? According to the religious standards, he's always done that. He fucked the whole world up and then he put one nigga in the world that's willing to sacrifice and fix everything. So you got to think how many stupid people was in the world when Jesus walked the earth, right? Whatever you want to call it. This is just for the believers, right? You got to think, right? There's a bunch of lost niggas until Jesus came. Think about it from this perspective, right? Maybe there's a lost nigga to Moses came. Maybe there's a lost nigga to... You got to think people were stupid. You got to think about that. This was a lot of stupid people. There's always been a lot of stupid people. There's always been a lot of dumb people from the beginning. And this shit happens over and over and over and over. It happened before Jesus. It happened before that. And it happened before that. But I start to realize, right? Every so many years, God puts a person into the world to try to fix it. Every so many years. God doesn't fix everybody. I learned this, right? I learned this about the it upstairs. It doesn't save everybody. It doesn't fix everybody, right? Because if, if, the, if the God had plans to fix everybody, everybody would be perfect. But no, he fucks everybody up and he finds one special individual to fucking fix this shit. Or maybe two or maybe three, whatever. But, but he's done that numerous times. You got to think how many people tried to fix the world. And the crazy part about it is it's a messenger, right? That's why when people ask me what religion am I, I tell them I'm not necessarily a religion, right? I'm not from that perspective, right? I'm from a, the 
I'm not from that perspective because I believe that he placed many people in this world to try to fix it. I believe in Muhammad, right? I believe in Jesus. I believe in Buddha. I believe in all of these motherfuckers, right? Because I, I like, and one reason why I say that is because I've been to different parts of the country. I've been to different parts of the world and I go, man, I don't think regular Jesus would have been able to survive over here. They need a different type of God. Right, so maybe God has just placed different messengers in different parts of the world to fix different parts of the people. Right? I don't think God would just create one nigga in Bethlehem. If there's people all over the globe, whatever flat earth or whatever you want to call it, I don't think he would just put one nigga in Bethlehem. That doesn't make sense. You know what? I'm going to put this nigga in Bethlehem and the people in China won't even get to see who this nigga is. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You're going to put one nigga in Bethlehem. And the niggas in, I'm talking about niggas in South, niggas in Cape Town, niggas in uh, America, niggas in Alaska. Nobody got to see Jesus. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. It, It doesn't make sense at all. Not one bit. So, I believe... I believe with all my heart that the man upstairs, he does this little weird thing where he scatters a bunch of stupid people, right? This is what I mean by the mad scientists, right? I believe God go, he make a bunch of stupid ass niggas, right? Like, no, listen to me. This might, this might sound fucked up, but I think this is how God minds work, right? Right? It's like a fucking mad scientist. So he go, let me sprinkle a bunch of little stupid people around the world. Let me put one smart nigga in that shit and see how, like, if he can fix it. Testimony. Testimony. Everybody got a testimony, right? But I realized it, right? Every so many years, right? There's always one person to make an extreme difference. So listen, go down the line. I want you to really go down the line, right? Right now, off the gate, you probably, you got to think, within the last, look, 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 listen to me. The average lifespan of a human being is between 60 to 100 years, right? The average lifespan. So let's round it off at 100. If the average lifespan is 100 years and people been living on this earth for 10,000 years, how many people have died? Billions. Billions of people have died. Actually, billions, right? People probably been living on this earth longer than 10,000 years. But billions of people have died. But out of that billion people right how many people do you actually remember that tried to do something so let's go down the line buddha tried to do some moses tried to do some horus tried to do some nigga seth nigga motherfucking nigga uh nigga gandhi nigga albert einstein da vinci nigga stephen hawk think about it right jesus think about it so out of all those billions of people it's about 70 people total that were nigga malcolm x martin luther king uh motherfucking Hulk. it's about it's about 80 to, it's about 100 people right it's about 100 people that actually walked the path that they were supposed to walk and I'm talking about people that wasn't distracted by the regular world. It's about a hundred people. Tesla. It's about a, it's a select few niggas. Hitler, whatever, right? Whatever you want to call it. But it's a select few niggas that actually walked the path that they were supposed to walk to completely try and change the world. Right? Think about it. So we have to look at Tesla like a god. Right? We have to look at Tesla like a Jesus, right? We have to look at Tesla in the same way as Jesus. We have to look at Albert Einstein the same way as Jesus. We have to look at Malcolm X in the same way as Jesus. We have to look at Martin Luther King. We have to look at all these people in the same way as Jesus. These are people who figured out who they were and they tried to walk the right way. I get it. I get it, right? Every so many years, right? And and I know this, right? I'm going to tell you a valuable thing, right? I notice all these people that I named, they all share one same story. Every person that I named from Tesla to Martin Luther King, 
to motherfucking nigga uh, Muhammad Ali. I mean, not Muhammad Ali, motherfucking Malcolm X. What? All the people that I named, Einstein, nigga, Jesus, whatever you want to call it, all the people that I named, they all share one thing. They said somebody talked to me from somewhere else. They all shared this valuable thought. They all say it. Everybody said it. We've all received ideas from somewhere else. Like, I don't know if those ideas come from God. Like for me, like some people go, yo, daylight, how in the God's green earth do you come up with the material that you come up with? And I go, sometimes I don't even think about the shit. I just like, oh shit, there it go. And it's almost as if somebody sent a signal to my mind. Like, it's like, like, sometimes I'll be sitting there and I just get the urge, like, oh shit, I gotta write this down. And I'll be like, yo, where the fuck did this come from? So then I think about it, right? I think about it. Every blue moon, right? I, like, I studied Albert Einstein and he said in his journal that he used to get these random ideas. Then he would just go in the room and write down everything that was on his mind. He don't know where they came from. <laughs> He has no idea where the fucking, where the ideas came from. They just came. And that happens to me a lot. Every blue moon, like, I'm like, oh shit, I'm tapped in. Boom, 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 boom. Before you know it, my whole verse done, right? And I notice everybody, all these individuals that has changed the world. Listen to me, right? All right, listen to me. And, and this is a question that I have for all 109 of y'all. There's a question I have for all 109 of y'all, right? How many of y'all, how, how many of y'all actually wake up every day and tell yourself, I'm not worried about my own heart, I'm worried about the world? How many of y'all do that? How many of y'all wake up and tell yourself, before I die, I'm going to try to fix the world? I learned a lot of things about the world. Most people in the universe are selfish, right? Most people live by a word, me. Me, 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 me. A lot of people, like, I gotta get my life together before I fix anybody else. A lot of people have that mentality, right? A lot of people have that mentality where they're like, you know what? I gotta fix my life before I fix everybody else's. And then you got some individuals that be like, I will put my life on the line for this world. Some people wake up every day like, yo, I'm going to put my fucking life on the line for this shit. Though. And I tell you, right, look where I'm at. Man. I'm walking this trail by myself, dog, because I understand what I have to do. Right? I know who I am at heart. I understand what I have to do. I understand what I have to do as a collective. Now, if anybody that knows me, right? Right? If you know me, right? If you know me and you grew up with me, these are just the people that I grew up with. If you grew up with me, you will know since I was a child, I was always focused on everybody. Since I was a child. I, like, it was naturally in me to be worried about everybody more than myself everybody most of the entire neighborhood rap now because of me most of my whole neighborhood dog i had everybody in the fucking studio dog i had a computer i had everything nigga i was making beats making music videos for everybody recording everybody's song keeping everybody dog like like i shed a big portion of entertainment into my neighborhood and i help people change their mentality i've always been focused on the whole world other than myself always and it's a thing look it's a thing that i can't escape it's a thing that i can't escape like no matter what like i like i try to help i'm gonna tell look i'm gonna tell you what type of nigga i am i'm gonna tell you listen to me i'm gonna tell y'all how much i try to help this world L listen to me I'm going to tell you how much I try to help this world. Everybody knows where I'm from. Everybody knows what side of the world I'm from. The whole world, dog. The 
whole world knows what side of the world I'm from. Every nigga in Watts know where I resided. They know where I grew up at. They know who my brother is. They know everybody know this shit, though. Ain't no secret. They like from that side. It ain't whether they feel I'm a thug or a game banger or not. They know what side I'm from. But my nigga, I help so much. Listen to me. All right, so if you're not familiar with where I grew up at, I grew up in Wise, California, off 103rd. Everybody that I know and everybody that I grew up with is from Grape Street. Everybody. Right? All my friends, all my family members, all my cousins, all my everybody. Oh, everybody from Grape Street. Everybody, everybody. My older brother is blood, but he's from Peppa. But my people from Grape Street. Everybody I grew up with, everybody I know is from Grape Street. Everybody I hang with from Gracie, everybody I ever roll with was from Gracie, everybody I play basketball with from Gracie. I help people so much. I help now if you familiar watch, you know Gracie's don't get along with the PJs and Gracie's don't get along with the Bonnie That just been beef for the last hundred some years. Everybody know this, right? But listen, needless to say, my heart, right? My heart helped people so much, so much that I have literally went to the Niggerson Gardens and did a photo shoot for the bro. I'm a nigga from the other side. I went in the middle of the Niggerson Gardens as an adult and did a photo shoot. My nigga, do you understand how afraid I was? I went and did a photo shoot in the middle of the Nickerson Gardens, dog. Dog, I'm walking through that motherfucker like, yo, they like, what the fuck are you doing, dog? Right? I'm walking through these niggas' projects like, yo, what the fuck are you thinking? Dog, I'm taking pictures of gut. So I'm in the middle of the fucking projects, right? My brain is like, daylight, don't go over there. You fucking crazy. Nigga, them niggas gonna kill your dumb ass. Remind you, this was in the midst of the problem. Don't go over there, the fucking brain gonna kill you. I go over there anyway, dog. I'm taking pictures. I see niggas coming out the woodwork. What's up, blood? Blood, what y'all doing, blood? You know, Jeremy, like, I nigga, me taking the photo shoot. Whoa, whoa. He like, all right, blood, but I, I'm seeing niggas. These are niggas that I grew up with. These are niggas that I done seen come shoot on our side. Homies and shot at these niggas all the time. I'm seeing niggas, dog, and I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I doing over here, dog? Like, what am I doing? My brain is like, yo, nigga, you better get the fuck out of here. My heart is like, nah, nigga. You God, dog, God got you. My heart, my heart is like, nigga, you protected. Nothing is gonna happen to you. My heart told me, nigga, you are invisible right now. These niggas don't even see you. These niggas don't see you. They, you're invisible. Like, it was literally like I had a cloak on. Like a cloak, like nobody said nothing to me. Niggas just like, oh, that's a regular photographer. Like, I guess because the camera was on my neck or in front of my eyes, niggas didn't even rec- Remind you, this was before I had a face tattoo, so niggas really knew who I was. They didn't even see me. They didn't see me. Nobody- I'm talking about- And remind you, right? I got homies from over there that I grew up with, childhood friends. A few niggas that I grew up with, played ball with. I seen them niggas. Like, I'm talking about made eye contact with the niggas, and the niggas just looked past me, right? These are people that I grew up with and they looked right past me. And I was like, am I here or not? Like, yo, to this day, like, I can honestly say if it wasn't for the pictures in the magazine, it was no way on God's green earth I, I would believe that I was over there. It's no way. It's like, I can't believe that I was over there. It's not possible. The only way I can remember and tell myself I was there is when I look at the magazine that I have in my room or I actually look at the photos that says shot by Devon Campbell and I go, shit, I was there. Dog, they didn't even see me. At that moment, I knew I had a purpose, though. 
had a fucking purpose. The entire hood knows me for making a diss record to the entire hood. I'm the nigga that dissed their hood. I said, fuck the dead homies all the time. I did it. Dog, it was a big beat in the neighborhood. I dissed the whole hood. Fuck your homie. Fuck y'all side. Fuck this. Fuck that. I went over there after that and shot a music video. My moral of this is, was to say, after all of that shit I did, right? After all of the shit I said, after all of us dissing each other hood, after all of us nigga talking about our dead homies and all type of shit, after all of that, me and Pat came became cool further on down the line, right? And this is how I know this shit is connected, remind you? Because A2I Gutter started a group called Addicted to Ink. Patrick actually was a member of the group Addicted to Ink. So since I was cool with Gutter, I became cool with Patrick. So it was a chain reaction, my nigga Project Pat. It was a chain reaction of how everything connected, right? So boom, before you know it, you know, Pat like, yo, man, I, I want to shoot a video, but I want to shoot it in the hood. And I'm like, <sighs> so look, let, let me tell you what I did, right? Let me tell you what I did. I went in my room. I looked up at the sky. I went in my room. Remind you, my room was by the window. I looked up at the window. I said, yo, God. You got me, right? Remind you, I'm not a nigga that ever prayed. I don't pray. I'm not a praying nigga. I talk to God or whatever it is like a regular nigga. Right? I'm not going to put on no fake ass, boy, dear heavenly father, I come to you in the name of Jesus to bless me with these. I'm not going to talk to God in no form of no. I'm going to talk to you like a regular nigga because you, you a regular nigga. Right? Yo, God, look. You got me, right? I just need to know, right? I just need to know, do you really got me? Because you showed me that you got me once, right? I just want to know, was that like a test or like, do you still got me? My mind said, nigga, you go over there, you crazy. My heart said, nigga, go over there. Nigga, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Right? So, right? My heart. So my heart. So boom, I go, well, Pat, when you want to shoot? He like, nigga, next weekend, nigga, just... Pull up, nigga, we gonna be outside. I load up my camera shit. I load up all my camera shit. Nigga, I get there, nigga. It's a bunch of fucking PJ niggas outside. Everybody outside. Also, R.I.P. Mookie, which is a dude that got killed by the police over there, R.I.P. him. He actually got killed by the police, and it's crazy because the music video that I took when I was over there, that was the last video of him being alive. The actual, like, I have his last footage of him being alive. Like, the footage that I shot is the last time people ever seen him alive. So, RIP to PJ Mookie. But my moral is this is to say, boom, I pull up. There's a bunch of niggas outside. I'm seeing all type of niggas like, oh, shit, that nigga the one. Oh, shit, fuck. Once again, once again, I'm in an enemy territory. I'm in the middle of enemy territory with a camera on my neck. I'm shooting a music video once again. Once again, I was completely ignored. It was literally like a fucking, in, like, it was like a cloak, dog. It's like a weird cloak. It's weird, dog. You know what it was? You know what it felt like? You remember the Book of Eli? Have, have anybody watched the movie The Book of Eli? Have anybody watched The Book of Eli, right? It was like that. Remember how Denzel said, long as I walk by faith, nothing can harm me? That's how I felt. I was like, you know what? I'm doing my fucking part in the world. Nothing can fucking harm me. You want to see the music video I shot? Get on YouTube and type in A2I Get It Project. Shot by Devon Campbell. A2I Get It Project. The video is up online right now. So I realized, as long as I walk with faith in my mission, not necessarily faith in the the fictitious religious aspect but long as I walk with faith and understanding my mission on this planet right? 
Now, when I looked at it from the bigger perspective, I was like, yo, by me shooting those pictures in the projects, that shit helped a fucking gutter get to a whole nother level. Not saying he wasn't already going to get to another level, but that shit most definitely altered and shipped his career. By me shooting that video for A2R Project, Pat in the Imperial Courts, that video most definitely shifted his career and made him feel a different type of way about life. Now he got a football lead, all type of shit. You know, Gutter, my nigga Gutter don't even fuck it. That nigga live in London somewhere. This is a nigga from the projects. Nigga live in London. Nigga move to London. What type of regular nigga think to move to London? So what I'm saying is this, right? What I'm saying is I realized my role. I realized my role. I realized my role in this world. I started to, I started to accept my role in this world. I started accepting. I started going, you know what? Right? I realized my role in this world. This is what I got to do. And needless to say, right? Needless to say, it's not necessarily about escaping the matrix. You're not supposed to escape this matrix. 